Even when we're not aware of it, media impacts our lives every day. Metro East has been committed to providing access to media technology, training, and tools for people of all ages for over 30 years. Today on Community Hotline, we'll be learning about a brand new way the youth education team is engaging with the community. Getting out of the studio to meet youth where they're at with the Mobile Media Innovation Lab. Joining us today to talk a little bit more about the project is Seth Ring, the Director of Education, and Jessica Liu, the Director of Digital Equity and Inclusion at Metro East Community Media. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate uh, being able to talk to you guys. Hi, Monica. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, so tell us a little bit, if you would, about what the Mobile Media Lab actually is. Yeah. Um, so the, the Mobile Media Lab is a, um, it's a, Ford Transit, <laughs> a super long vehicle, um, that basically, you know, we are able to deliver what uh, Metro East does remotely to people. So we teach people how to use media equipment and software. And uh, through the Mobile Media Lab, we've done, we've gone to different places before, but it just makes it easier. And it gives us a much more sort of visible presence. So part of that, what what happened was, um, if you don't mind, I'll do a screen share so I can kind of walk you through it. We did some community listening sessions. We, we work with immigrants and refugees and BIPOC communities. Um, those are sort of our focus for um, our media education and digital inclusion work. And the feedback from our advisory board and from our listening session was, it's difficult to get to places to sort of engage in programming with you it'd be helpful if you came to us, which is sort of nothing new in the world of, of education is it's a lot easier if you deliver to people. And so what we're doing is we're delivering our programming to schools, nonprofits um, in, in East County. Okay, so, and I imagine you'll also be going to uh, community events when we're back up and, and uh, every, doing everything in person. Is that right? That's correct. So. And we want them to be sort of culturally focused. So we already have some options. You know, we were interested in Dia de los Muertos, um, potentially um, Vietnamese New Year, and then um, Eid. Um, sort of, we're, we want them to be culturally focused and be a presence at those events, very visible so that people are aware of the services that we have to offer and um, get to experience a little bit of them too. That's what's cool about the Mobile Media Lab is it's, um, it's a way that we can be really visible at the, uh, these events and also show off work that's been generated by people. So if you look right here, this is a, a side-mounted short throw projector. So if we do a camp or something like that, or we work with a community, we can actually play their, their work back in a very um, publicly visible way. So um, let's see here. I think if we, if we look a little bit closer, um, it's just an opportunity to be right there in, in the action where you know the crowd is um, and share that with people. And what's nice about it too is it has its own power. So um, we can just plug in, we can just plug in and be mobile and, and it has its own battery array so that we can basically just plug into it and run our software off of it. So in our equipment. So here's a um, picture of the battery array that's in it. So you, what is, what is the kind of things that, what are the kind of things you have in the van itself then? You, you showed the batteries, but what else, is, yeah. what else is inside there for people well, to play with? That's right. Right now it's a bunch of boxes because <laughs> it's not done yet, but um, it's not branded yet. But when it's done and polished, um, we'll have, um, Basically, you know, we use iPads a lot, um, MacBook Pros, cameras, um, potential down the road, some VR equipment like VR goggles. Uh, basically, stuff that's sort of well-rounded and it empowers people on certain software, media software, and that sort of thing. So iPads are great for middle schoolers and people in general. They're very intuitive, and you can put a lot of different like audio recording software, video recording software, VR software on it, and then for jobs that require a little bit more professional polish, then we'll, we'll have those MacBook Pros and really nice high-end cameras that can take photos and video for our sort of um, older age groups that we work with. Um, and so they'll be able to kind of create more polished products. 
So uh, laptops, iPads, VR equipment, um, and then all the software that's on those things too. Sounds, it sounds cool. It sounds fun. You, you talked about that you work a lot with immigrant and refugee populations, and you talked about um, that this is to meet people where they are. What are, what are the actual goals of, of this project? I know that there's some DEI uh, focus on this. Um, maybe even you can talk about that, Jessica. What, 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 are your, what are the outcomes you're looking for from this work? Yeah, so um, much of like Seth was saying, the, the Mobile Media Innovation Lab is kind of like our code name for it right now. Uh, we still haven't named it. Um, but we've been running, uh, Metro East has been doing, you know, media education and digital inclusion programming for the past several years. Um, and this is just kind of like a way to deliver all of that really easily now, because before we were, we were kind of schlepping all of our equipment back and forth in bins. So now we have like a dedicated equipment to actually bring it to a place, the dedicated vehicles to charge everything. So we don't have to show up super early to the site and, you know, like set up our charging stations and everything. So that's one thing is like addressing the real like logistic need. One of our hopes is that our uh, community members will feel empowered by coming to these kind of classes and short workshops that we have. I mean, Metro East, we serve, you know, ages eight to 88. Uh, we have classes here that we have at Metro East, the actually on site and virtually now since of COVID. Um, but the mobile media lab is kind of a way to like, disperse like samples of like what we kind of have. So like Seth was talking about one of our most popular programs is the film with iPhone uh, because it's really easy to kind of uh, tweak it to fit different communities. So people get kind of a taste of what we have to offer and hopefully maybe come back for more if they're if that's something that they find they are, they're interested in or have an aptitude for or just really need perhaps for their for their job or their or school or whatever then they know where they can go for for more of it. Yeah. And and I'd just say you know part of you know the digital inclusion end of things like you have to think of the spectrum of skill sets that we work with. You know, we have some people that they could jump on a professional camera and you know go film a really cool documentary. But then we have people that have never used a keyboard or a mouse before. You know, it's we're trying to we're trying to kind of shift so that we make sure that those people that don't have the access to those tools or instruction have it available to them because we have a lot of you know historically excluded groups that just haven't had access to that kind of technology and training. We also make it a point to um, meet with um, each group that we work with before actually ro like rolling out programming. So whether it's a school or a community partner or an after school program, um, we like to meet with the teachers and the mentors who are actually going to be uh, doing the program and leading so that we make sure that our curriculum is actually in line with the things that that particular community is interested in. So. You mentioned that the, the mobile um, lab is not named yet. When are you going to name it? How's that going to happen? <laughs> um, so we, we do plan on naming it, but you know, in, in sort of the same spirit of we're sourcing from the population that we're trying to serve, um, I'm gonna do a quick screenshot. Um, we have a survey that we've created um, and it's, um, it's mostly right now, you know, the majority of people giving feedback on it because it's really aimed at kids um, are we're, we're trying to source like from middle schools and high schools um, to get feedback on what they want out of the vehicle. So this is our branding survey right here. And it has a couple big segments. One is um, we're um, asking sort of what fonts they like to see. So we have these different font sets. And then the second part of it is sort of the motif, like what is the look that you would want to see on this vehicle that would appeal to you? So we have like comic book, um, we have something that looks a little bit like Fortnite, which is a really popular video game and just in general video games, surprise, kids like video games, <laughs> adults do too, I like them. Um, and then uh, we had this sort of three tone look that's um, kind of prevalent on some certain websites like uh, Discord and Vimeo and sometimes Google. And then the last part is uh, we have, sorry, we have, um, we have a spaceship slash uh, race car look. 
And the last is urban street art. So something that maybe you'd see on a mural somewhere in the greater Portland area. So the first part is, what do you want it to look like? That's the survey we have out right now. The second part is gonna be, once we pick that motif and have our graphic designer um, sort of do up a mock-up of what the vehicle is gonna look like once it gets wrapped and branded, then we're going to send out a gigantic, you know, request to name the vehicle. A lot of people probably remember um, the Bodie McBoat face <laughs> scandal or just, you know, hubbub. Um, there was a vehicle in Britain that they tried to do this with. Um, and so the idea is we source, we're going to source the name from um, people in a big survey, and then we'll have our advisory board, we'll whittle that down to maybe the top five options of what we want to do, uh, what we want for that name. And then from that top five options, we'll pick um, the winner, the person that uh, picked the, the name for the vehicle. It's meant to be for kind of generally, you know, middle school to high school youth and obviously adults too. But if it were a little bit quirky, I don't think that'd be a bad thing. Metro East has been quirky since day one. So <laughs> it has, it, it, it should be something original and fun. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. So you've talked a little bit about this program. Um, and then what, there are some other things you have going on this summer besides uh, taking the mobile uh, van out? The one that we, I would say, is the most publicly available to people is we're doing a TikTok and YouTube camp with the Rockwood Library. Um, Seth was kind of mentioning how, uh, you know, we're starting to roll out education stuff. We've actually started doing it a little bit. Uh, we started doing some in May. Uh, and again, this is all kind of the curriculum that's been developed through kind of our uh, mobile media lab and uh, um, film with iPhone. Um, so we started in May with uh, BEAM, the Black Education Achievement Movement. Um, and we are uh, in partnership with BEAM um, and Portland Autobahn. Uh, we're actually taking students out to three different field trips. Uh, students are learning about uh, place-based history. They're learning about uh, jobs in environmental sciences. And then they're also um, using our iPads to kind of like document this whole process. So last weekend, we actually went, or two weekends ago, we went on a tour with uh, Clive and Kyan Davis, and they're the founders of the Black Williams Project. So it was really cool. You know, we were walking around with um, these youth and then kind of using our iPads to film um, the whole tour, excuse me, the tour. Uh, and then we were kind of like, the theme was like a scavenger hunt. So students had to go around looking for specific sites um, at like specific placards um, or trying to get specific shot types. And that's just like um, kind of kicked off our summer. We have next week coming up, uh, we're starting with Reynolds. Uh, Reynolds High School or Middle School? Middle School, yeah. Middle School, okay, great, great. Oh, that sounds like fun stuff so far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the so most of these are already arranged. You already have set set um, workshops or classes or camps or whatever. But the TikTok and the um, the TikTok uh, YouTube, YouTube class yeah. is is open to the public to the yeah. eleven to eighteen year olds. That, yeah, that's right. And so there's only twenty seats available. You can find that on that link. Um, there's a set, there's a registration sign up there. It's through the library, so you like basically sign up in a Zoom portal webinar type thing. And once we hit that 20 person cap, then we can't take any more students. We have iPads, iPad kits with lights and a microphone that we'll be checking out to students for that in a tripod. Um, so that's sort of the one that's open to the public. And then we are doing something called Skip, which is Summer Kids in the Park with City of Gresham. We'll be doing um, park pop-ups the first three week in August. They're, we're just calling them media pop-ups. It's just like a little sample um, of different stuff. I think the first week is video. The next week is um, podcasting. And then the third week is a VR experience. And we're rotating between... Nadaka, Red Sunset, and Gresham, Maine, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and our schedule's up on that web, web page as well. That's fun stuff. And, and people should realize if they like this, that they can, uh, they can sign up to be members of Metro East and that they can continue to take the classes and check out our equipment and that it's, uh, it's 
you know, it's, we make it very, very affordable for anybody. So they could just talk to us about it. We can get that going. So any, any final thoughts or anything else you want us to know about uh, what, what Metro East Education Department is offering this summer or has coming up? We have some plans to get some, the, some of the word out on like some EBB information. And then we're planning on working with Wood Village. They have a new, uh, I keep forgetting the name of the building, but the municipal it, building, the municipal building. <laughs> um, and that's supposed to be outfitted with, um, you know, rooms for the community, a kitchen. So we're looking to uh, pick up Welcome to Computers again, because pick, Welcome to Computers was a, put on hold because of COVID. So we're uh, hoping to do that again with the new building at Wood Village. And the Welcome to Computers is a class. We Seth talked about the different levels of competency um, with technology, and that's one for people who have a very low or limited um, exposure to to technology. and And it's for the immigrant and refugee communities. Is that pretty much right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, any, any Seth, you said you wanted. To well, we'll be doing up. stuff with uh, Reynolds. Uh, let's see. We'll be doing stuff with Gresham Barlow School District um, and potentially, um, I think it's De La Salle High School. So a lot of it's, you know, school year programming. Um, but I'm going to echo what you said, Monica. You know, the whole idea is that, like, hopefully people experience these things and they come back to the mothership. We have <laughs> studios to record in. We have tons of equipment to check out. We're like an equipment lending library or like the library that check out really high-end gear to people and training that's very inexpensive, um, you know, and, and we do offer scholarships for membership. If you can't afford it, we don't want to turn people down. Um, and that's the whole point is I think the thrust of everything we do is to get different voices out there than maybe what you see in, in the public mainstream, like on, on network TV, because, um, you know, people, don't always have access to, to that kind of gear. And we're, we're trying to give that to you, to you so that you can, you know, talk about what you want to talk about, what's important to you and, and change the messaging that's out there. I like that. I like that. Get your, let your voice be heard. Thank you both very much. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you, Seth. I appreciate you coming on today. And um, for, from all of us at Metro East, you know, thanks for watching and uh, stay safe, stay healthy and do check out Metro East. Mm -hmm.